What's going on guys? Welcome into the weekly recap video with the wheel strategy. We have the Robin Hood account on the screen, $21,306. We lost $7 today. We were up at one point, 51 bucks, but then we rolled over at the end of the day. That's likely due to mosaic. My mosaic position kind of sold off for the last 30 minutes or so. Uh, but overall, if we go to the week look, the one week look up 300 bucks. Okay, $300. That's what I like to see. We had a lot of good things happen this week. We had covered calls be rolled. There was a lot of rolling this week. I did a little more today, Friday. And we also had some calls that got assigned. So goodbye to a position. It's Marathon Oil. So I'll go to my positions right here. So these are the shares I have, JD, Mosaic, and Marathon Oil. And this Marathon Oil right here, the 200 share position that is now gone, or it's going to be. Uh, I'm just waiting for Robinhood to update. I'm not sure exactly when it'll do that. I feel like it's it's tonight, though. Unlike Weeble, which waits till the next business day, I think Robinhood will update tonight. The covered calls are already gone. My Marathon Oil calls are gone, uh, but they were in the money. So my shares will be gone, too. And I'll talk about that, the profit loss on the whole thing. We have JD calls sold for next week. I rolled those. CSIQ for next week. And then my Mosaic call for next week too. So we have all these options for next week, and which includes calls for the open position. So uh, let's just go into, we'll go into the Excel file first. Boom. So this is the week right here. Third week of February, we had a JD call, covered call. I closed in in part of a roll. I documented the closing of the call because it was a profit. Um, I could have netted it together and, and pushed it out to next week, but I decided to to create the two separate legs in the in the journal at least. So I'm gonna record the closing of the call as a profit, and then next week's sold call is gonna be its own separate trade. If all that made sense. So JD covered call profited 60 bucks by closing that early. That was today. Mosaic 32 covered call that I closed early as part of a roll as well. Same thing with JD. Uh, I decided to just realize the profit on the current contract and then treat the roll as its own separate trade. The one for next week. So $27 on the mosaic call marathon oil. This was a big one, a big realization of profits, $170 on covered calls. That's because this was the product of two rolls. So this is three weeks worth of call premium lumped into one trade because I just kept rolling it out and rolling it out. And I usually don't realize the net profit on the rolls until I let the contracts go completely. Uh, so that's what happened here. So this was three weeks or two weeks worth of rolling, three weeks worth of, of time that led to $170 profit in covered call premium on the Marathon Oil. Now that those calls were assigned and, and I also marked the shares, what happened to the shares here, but it was a no gain. So I just wrote Marathon Oil shares, no gain. And then a cash secured put on Barrett Gold, ticker symbol G-O-L-D, captured 11 bucks, let it expire worthless and profited the whole thing. So that's a total of $268 on the week. We're up $494 on the month, and we're not done yet. We also have these positions open for next week. So Mosaic covered call, got 32 cents for it. JD covered calls, got $68 total, or 34 cents a contract. And then a CSIQ put, Got 30 cents for that. So assuming I keep all of that premium, that's a total of $130 already in the pipeline for next month, next week. I mean, and that doesn't even include potential cash geared puts that I might sell next week because I have some buying power. So already looking pretty good, which means I'm set right now to profit over $600 on the month of February. Hell yeah, is what I say. So let's get into the charting. We'll get into... Um, we will get into trading view and I'll go over the charts and, and what everything looks like and I'll get on, go into further detail of all the roles and stuff. 
here's the S&P 500. It's, you know, hit another all-time high today. No big deal. Um, let's go to, let's go to Barrett Gold here, just because it's, it's going to be quick. It was a cash geared put. I sold it at the 14 strike on this day here. This was Thursday of last week. Sold it for this week. And, well, we had a Monday holiday, which helps. So it was a shortened week. And uh, it expired worthless. I was hoping it would kind of come down and I could sell more puts. Because I would like to get a position down here at 14 or less. But that's just not what happened. So that expired worthless. And I profited $11. Get rid of this line. Get it off my positions here. And on to the next one. CSIQ. CSIQ, let's get, actually, I'm going to put up the wheel graphic here really quickly, just so I can show you the breakdown. So $494 profit in February so far, and year to date, $1,100, $1,129 in realized gains on the year. 436 is from put premium, 460 from call premium, 200 from stock profits, $33 in interest. And uh, yeah, very, very nice so far but I'll get that off the screen so we can get the stock charts a little bit bigger here. All right, so CSIQ, here's the daily chart. I originally, there's a bit of a story to tell here. We'll go down to the 30 minute, actually, so we can see the week, the breakdown of the week. I originally had a cash gear put at 21, right around this level. And on Thursday, we had this red day right here. This was over 4% of a drop. It was right around this time on Thursday, which was yesterday, that I was looking to take advantage of this red day by selling a put for next week. Because after all, I only had one put sold at 21, and I can sell up to two puts. I'd like to get 200 shares of this, but I'm only kind of getting a starter position, getting my feet wet at 21. And then if I get shares at 21, I'd look to sell another put and collect more shares below 21, maybe at 20, right? So... That was the plan. And on Thursday with this massive red day, I looked to sell a put for next week. And it was available at the 20 strike. If I shrink this chart down. I was able to get possibly good premium at the 20 strike down here. So I'm like, all right, cool. I could sell a put for next week at an even lower strike, you know, further below 21. And that's a nice setup. However... This was on Thursday, and we had a whole other day left to go. And I thought that, you know, we're only 50 cents away from my current cash record put at 21. You know, what if on Friday this thing actually drops and I get assigned at 21? Well, if I get assigned at 21, that means the stock is even lower, which means it would be better to wait until that happens before I sell a put for next week. Because if it does crash below 21, I'd probably be able to get the 1950 cash secured put sold for next week and get a much better cost basis on the net position. So with the idea of selling a put out to next week, I was like, you know, I should probably just wait to see what Friday does. But at the same time, I didn't want to lose the opportunity to take advantage of a 4% red day by selling puts. So I compromised. I was thinking long and hard about it. I was like, wait, there's actually a good compromise. I could actually roll my current put down and out. That way I have a put out for next week. And I also don't have to worry about the put for this week. This is a perfect scenario. So I looked at the options chain and I was able to do that. So on Thursday, I took my 21 strike right here. My 21 strike and I rolled it down to 21 uh, to 2050 and I collected an extra 20 cents to do so which is pretty cool because basically what that means is I got paid $20 for the chance to buy CSIQ at an even cheaper price than where I was contractually obligated to do so prior I was originally contractually obligated to buy at 21 but by restructuring the deal, I'm now positioned to buy it at an even lower price, which is better. And I got paid for that by just pushing it out one more week. So that was the good compromise. Now I have a put sold for next week at a decent strike. And I didn't have to worry about getting assigned at 21 for this week. So I have the 2050 cash secured put sold for next week for a net credit of 30 cents. And I can show you on Robinhood what that looked like go to csiq 
go down to the history right here. Cash secured put roll. Let's go get a little closer. Cash secured put roll says 20. That's the net credit. So I collected an extra $20 on this transaction. And here's the breakdown. So let's see. Yeah. So I bought back my contract for my original contract for 12 cents. And then I sold, this is the buy, you know, see that? Buy that for 12 cents. And then I sold the 2050 for 32 cents. But when you net it together, it's a net credit of 20 cents or $20. So that is the breakdown there. And 20 bucks on, a, on a, another week's worth of time, $20 is a good premium. That is more than 30% annualized return on the initial investment. So very happy with that. And that's set for next week. So we're good there. We'll move on to JD. This one was a roll. So here's a 30 minute chart. Overall, a pretty solid week. It did, it did have a gap down here. One of those classic 4% red days, but then it popped back up and, and stayed up there. Stayed up around 24 bucks, which was great. I had a cash secured, I'm sorry, a covered call sold at 24 right here. And it was flirting around 24 all day. Started above it, went below it, came back above it. And I was like, well, here we go. A moment of truth. Expiration day. We're right at the money. My call is right at the money. What do we do? Do we wait to see what fate brings us? And maybe we get assigned. Maybe we don't. Or do I really like my position and should try to roll it out and give myself more time in the position? You know, because I could just take assignment, but if I really like my spot and my positioning on the trade, it might behoove me to give myself more time and more upside. And I went with that option. I went with the, let's give myself some more upside because I believe in where I bought in the stock and what the stock can do. I think this can, I think we can capture a really nice trade on this one. So I decided to roll the calls and I was able to do so. At the 24 covered call, expiring today, it was at the money, which is actually the perfect time. It really like the most ideal time to roll. Having your covered call or cash secured put at the money and on expiration day. It's a perfect scenario because it's expiration day. So that means zero days to expiration. All the extrinsic value that could possibly be taken out is taken out. Basically, you know, Theta has done as much work on the contract as it possibly can. And it's at the money, which means rolling up to the next strike is really easy because that next strike is the first strike out of the money. So there's still going to be a lot of premium because the out of the money contract is really close to the money. You know what I mean? Because when the price is at 24, you know, selling a call at 25 is only $1 per share above the current price. So there's going to be a lot of juice in that contract. It's not that far out of the money. You know what I mean? Whereas if, if you know, JD was at 22 and I had the 24 call and I wanted to sell it even higher than that, 25. Well, 25 is way out of the money if JD is at 22. But if JD is at 24, 25 is not that far out of the money at all. So I'm able to roll a whole nother dollar per share higher and get really good credit. Perfect scenario. And that's what I did. I sold the 20, I, I closed the current calls at 24 and I sold next week's 25. So a whole dollar per share higher. I have 200 shares. So that's a whole extra $200 in profit potential on the shares that I have and I got paid for it. Let's see how much I got paid. So $40 total credit, but I had 200 shares. So what it comes out to is $20 per share. Um, you can see that here, close the close contracts at for 14 cents, my 24 covered call closed for 14 cents. And then I sold the 25 covered call for next week for 34 cents, a net credit of 20 cents per contract. I had two contracts. That's why the total is 40 bucks. Um, so yeah, that was great. Got paid 20 bucks to be able to sell my shares a whole dollar per share higher. Yeah, I'll take that. And that's because I believe in this position to, to go up. I do think there's, you know, this is a volatile name, but, and it's a risky name. Don't get me wrong. That's why the, the, the volatility is there. But when you just look at the chart, you know, I mean, if there's a time to buy it, 
to buy JD, even though it's a Chinese stock and Chinese economy and stock market is kind of unstable. If there's a time to buy it, it's right now. Let's go down to a monthly chart to make this a little more clear. I mean, we are right at like the all time lows where it's been supported several times. You know what I mean? So if there's a time to buy it, it's right here. It's a, it's a $33 billion company. You know, this isn't a small company ready to go bankrupt. They have positive, they, they're making money. They have positive net income. They have positive earnings. So I feel comfortable with, with its balance sheet and its, and its profitability and its business um, and whatnot, what it's able to do. So yeah, I have shares at 20, 23, 25 and I have calls with a 25. That's a dollar seventy five above my basis. So if I was to get assigned to twenty five, I'd be making three hundred fifty dollars in stock profits on top of all the premium collected to this point. So that's very good. My break even now is down here at twenty two sixteen, which is more than a dollar below my cost basis. So I've recouped over a dollar per share in cost, and uh, and have more calls so more calls sold for next week. So this is going very well. Hopefully we can get a nice push. This could very well break down in a day or two, but we just we just got to play it as it lies. You know what I mean? We're never going to capture a good upside on any given trade if we don't allow ourselves to. So this is what I'm doing. I'm allowing myself to get some upside and capture a nice trade. Next, we'll move on to Mosaic. This should be quick. It's plain and simple. I had 100 shares at 31. I've had them for a couple weeks. I had a call sold at 32, which was nice because there's a whole dollar per share above my cost basis. So I stood uh, to make money on the shares as well as all the premium. And we opened, or we were above 32 on Friday. My calls were in the money. And then this morning, we were just about at 32, but then we sold off and we just could not get back up there. And I had this nasty red candle at the end of the day where it fell almost 1% in the last 30 minutes. And that's why my account dipped a little bit at the end of the day. So now we're at 31.50. These calls, they, well, actually they were, they would have expired worthless, but I didn't let them actually. I ended up rolling them out. So here's, here was the, the situation I was faced with. Because I didn't think I was going to get assigned. So I'm like, all right, do I just let the calls expire worthless and then sell calls on Monday? Or... Do I roll the calls out to next week, like close the current one today and then sell one for next week and capturing extra time value? You know what I mean? Because on Monday, if I wait till Monday to sell a call, there's only going to be four days to expiration. But if I sell it today, there's seven days to expiration. So there's more time value. So I was thinking, well, the 32 call right now, all things staying equal is going to be is going to pay more premium today than it is on Monday. So maybe it's beneficial to just close today's call, close this week's call and sell next week's while we still have that extra time value. That's what I ended up doing. Obviously, it could go either way. Mosaic could end up gapping up on Monday and moving higher, in which case it would have made more sense to wait to sell calls. But if not, if it opens flat and even dips down, then I definitely made the right move. It could go either way. The bottom line to determine whether I made the right call is how much premium did I get? What was the net premium on the roll? Because if it yields 30% on an annual basis, then I did my job and there's no regrets. And that's what happened. So I ended up selling the call. I rolled the call out to next week. Actually, you can see here, mo uh, the Mosaic call, I originally sold it for 29 cents, bought it back for two cents today. So I profited $27 and then I sold the next one for 32 cents. So I have the call sold for 32 cents for next week. That's really good premium. That's pretty much a 1% gain on the total investment in just one week, 1% because 1% 1 of $3,100, which is what I have in the trade is 31 bucks. I'm collecting $32 in just one week. So 1% return in one week. That's a, 52% annualized return. So yes, I'm happy with that decision, regardless of what happens on Monday, which is nice and a good spot. Mosaic is currently above my cost basis. So my shares are profitable. 
have a call sold even higher than where it is. So hopefully, hopefully it plays ball and doesn't sell off again. You know, seeing this, seeing these tops broken out to the upside after it released earnings, by the way, um, that's good. That's good news. Hopefully it doesn't come all the way back down and, and erase all that good progress. And the last thing we're going to look at is Marathon Oil. So we're going to move to the daily chart for this one. It has a really good time these past couple weeks. Had almost a 4% green day here. And then it's just it stayed up there. Had earnings, moved even higher. So it was, it was great. And unfortunately, I was stuck in calls at my cost basis of $22.50. I could not roll them up. Um, unless I roll them further out in time, like two weeks or a month, which I don't really want to do. I want to keep my trade shorter term. So I wasn't able to roll out and up on a one week basis. So I had to stick at my current strike. I was still able to collect net credits along the way, but I couldn't move the strike higher to collect that or to open myself up for profits on the shares. But as long as I'm getting a sufficient amount of premium on the roll, it, it's perfect. It's fine. It's a good trade. So I rolled them out. Ended up, I ended up rolling them out twice. So I had had these calls at twenty two fifty for three weeks, and well, marathon did not come back down. Closed at twenty three seventy eight, and it's time to kiss these shares goodbye. So we're gonna go back to the Excel file, and I'm gonna show you the full breakdown of the trade. This tab is the the covered stock graveyard. Every stock that I've been assigned on that's been a complete trade, completed trade for the last couple of years is all in here. So it's a mess, but that's okay. We'll get you a little closer. We're going to look at the marathon trade. So here's the marathon position, the whole trade. I have a nice little neat, neat box here that gives you everything you need to know. Um, I sold, I bought shares right here. 200 shares, cost basis of 2250 Is my cash secured put? This is how I entered the trade. I sold two contracts at the 2250 strike, got 17 cents premium, $34 total, and I got assigned. And then ultimately a net trade of that lasted three weeks. I had two calls sold for a net total credit of 85 cents a contract at the 2250 strike, total of $170 brought in. I also, which I didn't mention, I actually didn't even realize this until the other day, a dividend. I'm, I stand to collect a dividend. There was a uh, an ex-dividend. Let me bring up Marathon here again. Sorry. Go with full screen. There was a dividend last week. I'm sorry. No, this week on Tuesday. Right here. Dividend on Tuesday. What the heck? 11 cents per share. I had 200 shares. That's going to be $22 in dividend income. Looks like it's payable on March 11th. So we'll have to wait a little bit before we actually get that money. But... I stand to collect a dividend. That's even more money on the trade. So let's get back to that. So I'm going to get a $22 dividend. I received $170 in call premium, $34 in put premium, $0 on the stock. So that's the, that's the one part that sucks. But look at all the premium I collected and then the dividend income, a total of $226 on the trade. I made $226 on a $4,500 investment right here. And I did so in less than a month because I originally started the trade on January 29th and it just ended today, February 23rd, less than a month. I earned 5%. I made 5% on the trade in less than a month. So if you extrapolate that to a 12 month basis, it ends up being a 72% return, annualized return on investment. That is great. That is great. That means the money that was put to work, the money that went into this trade, my $4,500 did its job. And then some, because my target's 30%. I'm happy with 30% return on investment. And with this $4,500, I was able to do 72%, more than double what I'm looking for. So even though I made $0 on the stock, this trade was a major success as far as I'm concerned. That's where we stand, guys. Weekly recap in the books. $494 in profit so far for February. We have a whole another 130 for next week already. That could grow if I sell puts. 
$1,100 on the year. This is going very well so far. Hoping that I don't get stuck in a, in a sieve of a position. You know, we're rocking and rolling right now because every position has been working. If I'm ever in a position that sells off too much and I all of a sudden can't sell calls, can't do anything, then that's buying power. That's, that's stuck. It's dead money, basically. That's not earning me money. So far, I haven't been faced with that yet. That's why things are going so well. Let's just keep our fingers crossed and hope that it stays that way. That's it, guys. So thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and I'll see you all next time.